Hey, Kyle, right here. Uh, so, Kyle, a bit of a home game here in San Jose for you. Can you just talk about how the mood is for this fight week compared to when you have to travel a bit more? Oh, man, it's, uh, it's a lot better. I, uh, you know, flying from San Jose to Connecticut can be a, uh, quite a bit of a haul. So um, just the weight cut and everything just goes a little bit easier. And, you know, I get to train a little bit longer at home and, and do the things like that. So um, it's like any other sport, you know, like a lot of home games and you got the home field advantage. And I felt like I felt like not having to travel on that travel day is, is going to help me tremendously when it comes to the weight cut and get prepared. I always like to ask, when you're fighting in your backyard, so to speak, I know everyone comes out of the woodwork, hey man, where's my ticket, can I get one? What is your nice way of telling your friends you got to pay with your own money? Man, I don't really tell them that nicely. I just tell them, hey man, go to my, click the link in my bio and, and go find you a ticket, but don't buy the, the cheap ones. Buy the, the, the real expensive ones so you can see a little bit closer. So I don't really sugarcoat it, man. I, I make them all buy them. I like your strategy. Uh, talk a little bit about your fight with Michael Lombardo. Just how do you feel you match up with him, and what do you expect to see from him out there on Friday? Um, Mike's, Mike looks like a tough guy. You know, I, I've watched some film on him. He looks like a very tough guy. You know, he's, he's been around the sport for a long time. He comes from a great camp. Um, two high-level wrestling coaches with Oklahoma State guys where I'm from, so I'm pretty familiar with, with those guys. And um, as far as matchup wise, I mean, I, I think everybody knows my, my greatest strength. I mean, you can kind of see it in every time I fight. So I just think that's going to be hard. It's, it's hard for anyone to deal with that, you know, and, and you know, the level that I've, I've been able to keep growing it into not just a wrestler, but an MMA wrestler, being around the, the guys that I'm around at AK is just uh, I can feel myself evolving and uh, yeah, man, I, I just think my greatest strength with, with anybody is years of experience as far as thousands of matches that I've wrestled and, and being in front of thousands of people and, you know, my wrestling, I, I feel like uh, I should be able to get the job done here. So, uh, My final question, I would be remiss if I don't ask you, obviously your teammate Ken Velasquez with his hearing yesterday, just we know a lot of the AKA members were out there showing their support. Just what is your take on the situation and just the mood in the gym as you guys obviously process everything that's been happening? Yeah, I mean, when, when I first heard it, it was, uh, it, it was really, it was really, you know, crazy, you know, because I literally talked to him two days before he came, he comes to the gym every day and helps us and, uh, you know, I have a daughter and, and he, you know, obviously he has, you know, a son and a daughter and, and we sat down and afterwards we were talking about uh, our favorite Disney movies that we like to watch. And um, so to, to see all this happening to someone like that, man, it just it's it just it just shows you how backwards uh, a lot of this legal shit is. And, um, you know, I think uh, I think anyone, you know, as a father now, I, I didn't realize when I was growing up you know, how much it actually means to be a parent. And I think, you know, your biggest job now, even now to what I do is, is to protect my kids and um, to protect my daughter. And, and man, I couldn't tell you if I wouldn't have done the same thing um, that he did when, when I, if I found out something like that. So, you know, I, I think they, uh, they need to really look at this a little bit and, and realize who, who's really was in the wrong here. And I think the, the state of California could have done a little bit better by at least, uh, you know, at least letting Kane's family know what their process was on this to, to kind of give them some, you know, clarity, you know, just to release a, a you know, a, a sexual predator or a child molester, whatever you want to call them, you know, um, out back into the world just doesn't make sense to me. I'm not, and I'm from Oklahoma, man, and, and if you did something like that there, I don't, I don't think that guy ends up any different. Hey Kyle, we've seen combat sports brothers before in the Pettises, Pitbulls, and many others. I'm curious, has your brother Justin considered hopping into the MMA realm anytime soon? Oh man, <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I don't, I don't see him being much of a uh, of a fighter. But you never know. Um, I train him every now and then when I'm at home. But he's still in high school. You know, he's he's winning state titles right now in uh, wrestling, and you know he's one of the best kids in the better kids in the country in, in wrestling. So. You never know, but I, I think uh, I mean, he's taller than me. He got he got the good genes in my family. A lot of my family members are about six foot and above, and they've all played uh, Division One football. So I was the first one to kind of break the trend and, and went and wrestled. So uh, yeah, man, I, I I don't know. Hopefully, maybe one day. But my big thing for him right now is let's let's try to go to the NFL. 
so I can uh, retire and, and go tailgate and get drunk all the time and shit, so. Hey, Kyle, how you doing? Uh, did you just say that Lombardo is training with some of your former coaches from Oklahoma State? Well, they weren't, they weren't my coaches, but they're alum. Um, so King Mo was Oklahoma State, and Steve Mako wrestled at Oklahoma State. So um, they weren't there when I was there, but you know those guys, right? They've, they've done well in their sports as far as wrestling, obviously. And, and then Mako's a big-time coach now in wrestling at ATT, and obviously everybody in here should know King Mo. So, yeah, man, they're, they're Oklahoma State guys. And I think I'm pretty sure King Mo trained at AK a while back, if, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, uh, he's down there with those guys. So he's learning. He, I'm just saying he, he's learning how to how to wrestle, and you know he's learning from some really good guys. So, so do you feel like you know how they train, how they wrestle, and do you feel like that might give you an advantage knowing that he's training with some guys that, you know, you know them, you know. Yeah, no, I mean, a lot of Oklahoma State guys do carry the same techniques, but I wouldn't say. I do the things that I did in college in wrestling in MMA. You know, touching the knees a little bit, you know, dangerous and and things like that. But um, you know, I would I would consider my stuff a little bit more American Dagestani now. I mean, we do a lot of trips and things like that that you learn from, obviously Habib and those guys. So, you know, I, I'm just saying that, that guy's you know he's around a, a bunch of really good coaches and, um, but I still don't think that's gonna make a difference. Yeah, that makes sense. And uh, neither you or Lombardo have been finished in your pro careers. Do you envision that changing this coming this Friday? Um, man, I, we always said in college, you know, you, you wrestle a seven minute match. So you don't ever think about, well, I'm going to pin them in a minute or I'm going to, you know, do whatever I'm going to do to try to end the match quickly. You just go out there and you prepare for seven minutes. And um, for MMA, I'm prepared for 15 minutes. You know, I, uh, I'm doing better at some of the things that allows you to finish guys in the gym against high-level guys. So, you know, I, I, it could definitely happen. But mentally, man, I'm prepared for 15 hard minutes. And like you said, the guy hadn't been finished yet. So um, I'm just going to go out there and, and do, it, do the things that I do best and, and work for, to get my hand raised. All right, we'll take a couple more here. Nathan, go ahead. I think for me, everything. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't just train one uh, specific thing. I still wrestle. At a, I still wrestle all the time. Um, you know, I'm striking. I'm, I'm grappling. I'm doing MMA wrestling. I'm doing MMA jiu-jitsu. So I, I would just say just overall MMA, man, and, and I feel a lot more relaxed when I'm sparring. I don't, I don't feel so tight and so tense. You know, I'm not really afraid of things. I see a lot of things now that I used to not really be able to see. Um, I don't, I, yeah, I just feel like I'm getting better everywhere, man. I, I train at the American Kickboxing Academy with some of the best guys in the world, some of the best coaches in the world. And um, they, they don't put you in situations where you're only growing in one or two different areas. They make sure that you're doing everything right and, you know, and, and they'll get in your ass if you're not. So I just feel like um, for me personally, man, I just feel like I'm getting better everywhere, you know, and, and I've only started this four years ago. So um, I know it's a long time, but like Tyrell was saying, you, you only get 10. I'm, I'm, this is my 10th fight, you know. A lot of the guys in the top 10 on this, on this uh, rankings have 30, 25, 30 fights. So I'm just growing, man. I'm trying to get better, and, and that's just what I'm going to continue to do. Oh man, um, I golf a lot. I golf a lot. I'm not very good, but um, I try. I try real hard. I even I even go and buy the nice shit to see if I can do well with it. But um, seems like the the more nice stuff I buy, the, the less I do um, good. So I don't know, man. It's just a hobby, you know. We, we're 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 a bunch of violent men and and women, and I think you need some peace to that. And I think golf is my kind of outlet to kind of go out there and just do something completely opposite than what we do every day. Uh, Sean? Hey, 
It's been good. It's been, uh, I did a nine week camp. Um, it's been really good, man. I, I, uh, I, like I said, I trained at the American Kickboxing Academy, AK. So, you know, they, they've, they've produced champions multiple times. And, you know, I, I got to see, uh, Daniel Cormier and Habib and those guys go through full camps. And I, I didn't change anything. I'm not changing anything that they did. I, I saw exactly what they did. And, uh, you know, I just followed a blueprint. You know, I do the same exact things that they did. I, I, I haven't wavered. I haven't changed it, even though some days are crazy hard. But um, I feel like my camp's always good, man. I, I, I stay pretty consistent on what I'm doing. And, you know, I, 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 uh, I feel like I'm a pretty durable guy. So that's been a great camp. Well, my uh, my first experience in actual MMA, I got to right when I got out here to San Jose, DC was training for John Jones, and so I got to go and 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 DC and I and I wrestled at the same college, obviously not the same time, but you know, Cowboy family strong. So he took me everywhere he went, man. We got to, I got to see him do his camp, I got to see him spar, I got to, he you know he showed me things during his camp. I got to go watch his media days. I got to pretty much live the life of a champion without being a champion. So, um, man, it was it's 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 something that you know a lot of guys don't get to see. And I was very blessed, you know, to have someone like DC, who everybody knows in here is just a great guy, you know, and and get to see someone who's so humble with every with everything in front of him. So, I feel like uh, you know I, I've been around some very high level guys my whole life, and I think that's something that's that's been able to uh, help me get to where I'm at today.